So, Mr. Vedit, first of all, what are you hearing from this summit? What are you taking away from the past two days? Well, I think there's been a lot of uh, exciting opportunities that have been uh, exposed in the, in the meeting about new ways to think about ALS and new therapies that we could uh, develop for ALS. Um, yeah. It sounds like a very exciting time. No, it, it is. I, I think there have been a number of papers that have been published in the last year that give us a scientist a, you know, a lot of basic insights into the disease. And as a result, maybe different ways that we could think about developing new therapies to treat the disease. Tell me what ISIS is doing. So ISIS is a uh, biotech company located in San Diego County. And the focus of the company is on uh, RNA targeting therapeutics. So you're aware that uh, DNA makes RNA that then makes the protein, and oftentimes, in particular in ALS, we have uh, toxic proteins or proteins that mis misbehave. And so what our company does is tackle the RNA that makes the protein, therefore make, uh, prevent the, the misbehaving protein from ever showing up in the body. Wow. And, and so it's called antisense technology is the approach that we're taking. Is it almost like a vaccine? Can you describe it like a vaccine? No, it's it's it's... It's sort of molecular therapy is the way I would describe it. So what we're doing is blocking the production of the protein that's involved uh, by binding to the RNA. So if you bind to the RNA, like think of a zipper. So if you zip up the RNA, it no longer can make the protein. And what our drugs do is, is bind to the RNA so that it no longer makes the functional protein. So this, your therapy you envision would target who? Someone who already has ALS, but it hasn't progressed very much? It, it, it could target a number of patient populations. So uh, ideally, like any neurodegenerative disease, the further progressed you are in the, the disease, the harder it's going to be to have a, a meaningful effect. So ideally, we would treat patients early in their disease course. Um, and, and so we, this technology, we have in a variety of different therapeutic indications, uh, including cardiovascular disease, cancer, metabolic disease like diabetes as well as neurodegenerative diseases like ALS. So it's being used broadly uh, in, in clinical trials today. Uh, this is our, we, we do have one ALS drug that's in clinical trials, uh, targeting a, a subset of the patients out there that, that suffer from ALS. And it's uh, uh, patients that have a genetic form of the disease, so they inherit it from their, their parents. And we're targeting uh, a protein that has a genetic mutation and preventing that protein from being made called uh, uh, the protein superoxide dismutase. And so for patients that have this mutation, we're blocking that protein from ever being made in the body. Talk to me about your hopes for this clinical trial. How many years? You're in phase one, you said, when do we get to phase two? What's that gonna look like? Because everybody's gonna wanna know, okay, you're developing this drug, when can I have it? Clinical trials is a long process. So the phase one trial is really to demonstrate that the drug is safe. And, and, and that's important, you, even recognizing that uh, you know, ALS is a lethal disease where patients uh, uh, will end up dying from the disease. You don't want to make the disease worse, so you have to do this in a very measured uh, pathway or, or step um, that you study the, the, the drug, make sure it's safe in a very small number of patients. Uh, if, if you demonstrate that it's safe, then you start looking for hints of efficacy. And then you have to do what's called pivotal uh, studies or phase three trials in which you look at a larger number of patients and demonstrate unequivocally that the drug has efficacy. That whole process can take years to do. And it's, it's, uh, I recognize that that's not something patients like to hear, but it, it is important that we don't uh, put a drug out that's gonna cause harm to the patients. And it's really important also that we demonstrate that the drug does have uh, a high, high degree of efficacy in these patients. You know, a lot of people whose loved ones have ALS or ALS patients themselves think, we're just a drop in the bucket. You know, there's cancer to worry about, there's heart disease, there's HIV, there's so many other big diseases that everybody seems to be focused on because ult ultimately pharmaceuticals have to make money. And ALS, not that exciting because the patients die off so fast and there's fewer numbers. Why did ISIS decide to take up ALS drugs? So the ALS drug that we're developing, again, is, is for a very small percent of the ALS patient population. And w we, we chose to work on that initially because it was very well validated as a target. And that's one of the issues that the pharmaceutical industry runs into, is that there are a lot of creative ideas that you could have to, to develop a drug against uh, this target or that target. And many targets that we work on in the industry 
there's good scientific hypothesis, but there's no clinical data that support that this should have an, uh, an effect. Whereas in this particular case for ALS, what we're doing is targeting a protein that's very well documented to cause the disease. And so it's, uh, I don't think anybody would argue that if you lowered the amount of protein, it should have an impact on the disease. So the target risk is, is, is mitigated. We still have to demonstrate that we produce a robust enough effect to, to have a, uh, an effect on the clinical course of the disease. But we, we chose that initial target as our entree into neurodegenerative disease because it was such a well-validated target. These patients have a very well-characterized course of their disease progression, and we felt that we, uh, it was an important opportunity for us to uh, study at least our initial the sets of clinical studies in this patient population. Thank you for that explanation. There are a lot of people, though, who would say the industry as a whole, the pharmaceutical industry as a whole, leaves ALS kind of on the back burner because so few people relatively are affected by it. What can you say, you know, about things that you've observed in the industry and what it tends to lean towards that either validate or refute that argument? I don't think it's that the industry doesn't want to work on ALS because it's such a small uh, a patient population considering against other larger diseases. I think historically it's been that there haven't been that many good ideas where you could develop a drug, ideas for targets to develop a drug against. Uh, the industry likes to work on validated targets. So we all know that lowering cholesterol will prevent heart attacks. And so there are a number of drugs that are being in development because it's such a well-validated marker. If you lower cholesterol, you'll prevent a heart attack. Uh, with ALS, the problem that we suffer from is that there aren't good ideas of how to approach the disease. And I think once somebody identifies that going after a cholesterol-lowering strategy had an impact on heart disease, so somebody could identify a similar strategy for ALS, I think you'll see a lot more interest in, in ALS uh, as a therapeutic approach for the pharma industry. Our business is to help patients, and if we don't help patients, we don't make money. And, and so ALS is clearly a disease that has a large unmet medical need. And I, I think that's what's so exciting about this meeting is that there are a number of different opportunities that are presented at the meeting where we in the industry can think about approaching it. Uh, from, from a therapeutic perspective. And then, you know, I, I think the other issue is that some of the other markets are, are getting met. So uh, you see a shift in the focus of industry more towards neurodegenerative diseases like ALS. And I do think that over time, you'll see more and more larger companies uh, uh, develop programs for treating ALS. Uh, um, as the research progresses. Yeah. As the, as the research progresses and as our knowledge of what causes the disease progresses. One of the major advantages of the summit is that you get to meet the researchers within the state of California who are actively involved in ALS research in addition to some national uh, key opinion leaders that are here. So it's a very good place to network with the, uh, scientists that all have a common interest in ALS. Um, it's also a great way to learn about new science. And so we are learning about, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we are learning about new therapeutic opportunities. There are some very exciting studies that have been published recently. We're hearing about uh, them in more detail in, in this meeting. And, and so it's been a very uh, productive uh, uh, meeting for me in that I am bringing back new ideas of how we could approach ALS uh, based upon the information that's being uh, disseminated in, in, in the meeting.